Hey guys, on October of 2018, I was invited by David McLaren. He's the CEO and president of BB Sound and GNL Guitars to talk about Clarence Leo Fender and see their facility. If we were to share our history and where we come from, then we start, we, we have to mention Music Man or what happened there and then back to Fender. And then it's awkward for us because we're this brand, the GNL brand, it's the tail end of the CLF heritage, which is really all three brands. Right. You know, so it was awkward. So I thought, you know, screw it. Let's tell them where we came from. Right. What happened? Imagine it's night, like it's 1963, 1964. You're Leo Fender. You, you've had a hell of a run. Imagine it. year after year, the business challenge is managing that growth. But as you start to see the early 60s, you start to see these, uh, you know, he's wondering how big is this going to get? And then he starts to see these import guitars, right? Japan, Japanese import guitars. You start some of them were a little bit weird and stuff, but they were starting to be getting surprisingly good. Maybe it's time to pull the shoe. I don't know. But imagine he's got a lot of pressures, got a lot of mind pressures. Uh, maybe an illness contributes to that, but it's certainly not the sole factor. Where if you boiled that down to, oh my God, he's gonna die. He's gonna sell the thing. Oh, I've been healed. Right. Let's start anew. You know, kind of like that. The, the deal's coming together, and uh, in, in, with... Um, CBS? Yeah, and Don Randall. Don, you know, a, a right. chieftain in there, because his, his, his chunk of money came from the part of Fender Music Sales, you know, the separate right. Right. But CBS had to buy all this shit. Little, owners, little pieces of land and buildings, because Leo had all this stuff, owned it separately, and he had, like, Clectronics owns this and leases it to Fender, so they had to buy all this stuff you right. know it wasn't like there's this naughty little bucket with a bow on it, it was all right. these pieces that you right. needed to to get to assemble the, the the place so uh but he was still quite active in the design work i think the last complete thing that he did was the electric 12. and that was uh mid 65 wasn't it when right that came right. Out? yep and uh, the deal was completed with CBS, uh, the deal I think it was January or February 69, uh, 65, and I think it, the, you know, the key handover was April or May or so. But for the first, people think, okay, well, 65 you sold at Leo Fender, you know, he's out of here. Hey, good luck with that, guys. No. He had a 10-year non-compete agreement, which means, hey, you're not going to sell this thing to me and immediately go turn around and script, right? Standard. And consulting too or not? Five years consulting, because if you're them, you're CBS, and you got this thing and you want to grow it, and there's a, a guy who's singularly responsible for the greatest hits there. You know, in a very, you, you could talk about the, you know, my great team and stuff, but when you've got a guy, so much concentration of, of the talent and skill is in the one guy who's leaving, you don't want to grab that thing and he's walking out the door. See, it's like, no. Right. Not just in terms of product design, but the guy who was engin it, it can, central to the engineering of the process design. Right. Shit starts going wrong. You don't want to have him leaving. Right about that time that he did that deal with the, the with uh, CBS as it was oh, it's getting like, completed at the top of 65, you can only hear him. Leo started another little business called CLF Research Company. It was just a little new little business. But he expected that once he sold the company, he's not gonna stay there forever, right. you know? Right. It's not his anymore. It's a different scene. The owners have a clearly a different vision for where they're, they're going to dramatically expand it. He knew they were going to do that. But you don't know what it's really going to feel like to be there. There was CBS management, people coming in. So the culture was changing dramatically. And it wasn't the same old place. And he was still Leo Fender, but he wasn't calling any shots. And he was a guy used to calling shots. You know, he's got his cup of coffee or whatever and he's in the lab and I'm working on some stuff and the, and the Rhodes guys they're having some troubles over there and uh, you know a lot of what he was doing wasn't just guitar stuff it was Rhodes stuff right but so he starts this little this is a CLF research company because he knows he's gonna he's gonna need to get his own digs now right and uh, that summer uh, he gets a building nearby on Elm Street and he moves his stuff out that's his office his laboratory his little workshop you know his scene he moves it out to Elm Street, and sometime later, he develops all these buildings on Fender Avenue. Right. He bought this land in 1967, and then he moved the stuff from Elm Street to here. He was developing all this land as income 
properties. It was a safe place. Orange County, real estate was going up. You put your stuff in these nice little income properties. It was a business that he already knew because he had these buildings. You know, he bought these things. He understood the business of little office front, warehouse back, because that's just how the Fender building was. So when we go in his lab and we're gonna see like benches, we're gonna see artifacts and not everything is seems like of this era, it's a prior era, it's because his little scene continued across what he did at Fender, they did uh, for the Music Man instruments, which were designed and manufactured here, and then GNL. So that little scene you, you go in transcends all his brands. Right. It's his place. When he moved out, personally had moved out from the Fender Company, then he moved all his office and laboratory and so forth to his, a nearby place on Elm Street until this building was done. Right. Uh, and remember I mentioned about, look at all these uh, things like the carts and benches, they're all sort of silver with the wood, they're all those things that were made by Ronnie Beers. This is something I learned this year, I didn't even know this, I've always wondered why are these ones a different color? And my brother Johnny, he knows the story to that. So, um, in the mid-60s when they were doing the custom color and the pastel things, what they would do is they'd just go to the auto, particularly George, uh, go to the automotive uh, paint supply, right? So, right. you know, cars and the, you know, all the body shops would get their paints from suppliers, like local DuPont and whatnot. Suppliers. Right. So they would get automotive paints, and they would try and maybe they'd mix it up a little bit. So what they were doing with this color that became surf green is they started with the GM color, it's like the, uh, what, what we call Bel Air green today. Right. And what that is, is like, imagine like the 57 Chevy Bel Air with the white with that sort of turquoisey kind of color, or the uh, Chevy Corvette, the first gen one, where the inside cove thing might be that contrasting color. They took that color and they just watered it down with white to make it softer. Right. And so I guess they had an attempt at this thing, whatever it is, they don't like it. And Leo said, instead of just, you know, dump the paint, get rid of it, paint my benches. So what these benches are is a sort of prototype Fender surf green color. Wow. Interestingly, in the late 60s, by the way, so he's still on the clock of Fender, he's doing stuff, and he's, you know, there's the three bolt neck concept and things that he's, that he's working with. But it seemed like the pace of activity was slowing. And my feeling is there was a mismatch where he's thinking about how do we take the Fender product and line next level where do we go from here you know next okay. so next generation technologies features you know function he was always about that aesthetics are kind of cool too but function he was always about what does this thing do new better than the ones that came before but cbs's thing is how do we just make more right and leo is coming up with technological innovations that might be costly or, you know, where they're just, they just weren't interested in the what's next. You know? So right. he's, as we'll see in his lab, the guy was messing around with active electronics on board a guitar body Telecaster thing in the late 60s. This guy was way next level. So this is a CLF research prototype that was made uh, while he was still working, you know, he was out the door of CBS but still consulting. In this, you can imagine, he's thinking about where is Fender going to go? Where can I help? take right. the vendor company, that's what he's getting paid for. Uh, so, by the Electric 12, the, so the split coil thing, that was firmly in in guitar land in his world then. Right. Right, because we started with the P bass thing, we did that. But he's looking, it's like, well, why, we can have a single coil sound and there's no single 60 cycle hum, so why would we go back to that? So this was his new direction. I can plug in different chords and it loads my pickups differently. No, 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 no. Right. And he'd go, well, you don't have to have that. Why don't we just put a buffer right here, you know? Look at this, nine volts to be achieved by AA batteries. Oh, that's cool. And this is what, 1968, 1969? He's going, okay, now how do we consistently next level this thing? And they didn't want to play with that. So he's getting disillusioned. He's hanging out, he's got his yacht, he got the next one going on, he's making money, he's got his real estate development business, loves guitars, keeps thinking about them. Then you got Forrest and Tommy looking to do something. So Leo floats that boat to get uh, the business going. It was first, I think it was going to be tri or it was Trisonics with an X. Leo didn't like that name. Somehow he comes up with Music Man. And then the first stuff out of the gate were the amplifiers, because I guess the, the, the non-compete, I believe, was specifically the guitar stuff. That was, you know, that was whatever the amps were cool. But it was very clear that a natural brand extension 
would be guitars and basses when the time came. This place was being built with a view to the future guitar and basses. So he had this building when music when he had music band. Yes, this was a so this development, Leo Fender's you know real personal real estate development. This building was uh, specifically for his CLF research facility and factory. So Leo would spend all his time in his shop designing up instruments using something called the breadboard system, uh, kind of like a breadboard for electronics. He would figure out ways to put pickups in different positions on basses and guitars. This would save time not having to design a full prototype. It would let him experiment with ideas. Here is where the instruments were designed and manufactured and then sold to Music Man. So Music Man was sort of like the Fender music sales in, in that. And by then, by the way, George Fullerton had started work here, I want to say 1974. He, he was spit out of Fender, I think, in 1970. A lot of the old guard, people that knew how to do stuff, were getting squeezed out by people with degrees, you know? Right. That was that culture. It sucked, you right. know? It was, they were, sales were growing, yeah. And there was money to be made, but culturally it sucked. And it was right about that time that George, you know, Leo had a need for a guy like George, you know, because right. George's primary gig around here was the draftsman. But George was also a bit of a stylist. He was, you know, he did oil paintings and whatnot. So he had an eye for some flair. So there was George, George's talents on the street. So, okay, George, you can come over here because we're getting this thing kicking now. Because uh, it's, you know, the, uh, the, the non-competes almost going to be up in a couple of years here. Right. So this place is, uh, is, is, I think it was late 74 or at least 75, the building was done. This is a hand done one. I think George did this because George was the artist. Oh yeah, it's not like a... No, no see, it's not a water decal. Look at, no, look, look at, look at that. this. Check this. This is 19, early 1978 production. CLF Research was not a brand. It was a manufacturer. It was a thing. It was just behind the scenes. Nobody knew it. 1976 is the first Music Man... Uh, a Stingray guitar and bass. The Stingray guitar with its dedicated active electronics. It was uh, it was forward looking, and it might have been too much for the time. The level of intensity of the design work for the instruments, you know, because now it's going to be we're going to bring out a, a guitar and a bass, and it's going to be new first new products, you know, that are really a Leo Fender design thing. Right. Since Fender won, so they wanted to wow people, you know. Right. So there was a, there was a, a lot of investment in that to come up with stuff that was that was fresh, you know. Right. And it, some of it was arguably too fresh. Why didn't this continue being making music, man? It's just people problems. It, you know, it's just people. They right. always they always screw everything up. Right. Had nothing to do with the, anything else. Just people. Right. And everybody was guilty, you know. Right. There was no. You know, nobody was uh, the angel. In 1979, Leo Fender and George Fulton broke ties with the Music Man Company and started GNL Guitars. This model is called the F100, and this is the first guitar model from GNL. The body shape yeah. with the little bit rounder, bigger butt thing, that's uh, like what carried over on the Rampage and Super Hawk, like what Jerry uses. Right. But this is where this body shape first came out, but it's got the GNL bridge, it's got active. Oh no, this is passive electronics on this one. This one was also offered with a preamp. So I never knew, I'm just, that they had, a, you guys at one point, you had a different headstock shape. That was the first one. And at that time, George was a, he was still trying to work on the idea of having some sort of hook. Right. Embellishment, but he wasn't there. That leads us to today. GNL Guitars is still made in the same facility that Leo had the vision to build in 1967. They use a lot of the same machines, like this one right here, that Leo actually put in place. If you look at the old Fender Tour photos, you see a lot of stuff looks the same. Because, well, it was Leo's shop and Ronnie made a lot of the same stuff the same way he did it before. It worked. But of course, they've modernized the facility, added CNC machines, even a Plex machine. GNL is definitely a custom shop. They are what you hope they would be. A builder that is focused on making one instrument at a time, each one being its own piece of art. But detail sanding is still done the same way it was done before. So that's why the product doesn't feel any different. Because we still rely on hands much more than might be necessary, technically. 
like George Fulton designed the headstock to make it a more elegant instrument. I was really shocked. I didn't know what to expect when I went to the facility. What I saw was a facility of people who desperately care about what they do. They're building custom shop guitars. And as many times as I would say that to them, they would say, no, no, we're just making guitars. But realistically, I've been to so many factories and so many shops around the world that this is a custom shop. The way GNL builds and runs their facility makes each instrument almost unique. It was really impressive. So impressive that I had to order one. Like this. Look like old yeah, it's because they're Leo's benches and Ronnie made them. He'd created instruments and the world followed before. He was looking to he he couldn't look to somebody else for leadership. He was looking to pioneer the future. Right. As he had done, that's what he knew right. for a couple of decades. 